This may take a year or two. Once you have accomplished that, once you have established yourself as an excellent anesthesiologist, the word will spread around. The administration will know you. They will make a note about your contribution. Really, the really surgeons uh, and keep be uh, uh, looked upon by everyone and you internally become extremely confident that you are respected. And I the think the first point I would like to mention is, unlike what we think, uh, in US, the anesthesiologists are not getting as well paid like yes. their other colleagues. The surgeon, um, most of them would like to have the most skillful anesthetist because one cardiac arrest, one the hypotensive, case, the way one you communicated, the way you spoke to the patient, the way you followed up the case. When they see that there is a difference in the way you handle the case, you naturally become the winner. So, so every place where I went looked saturated. But it was even then, not now, even then. Uh, I uh, even my wife was asking, have you made a mistake of coming back here? But it lasted only. There is a months. subtle difference between men and women. I I want to quote it. Uh, I don't want to be misconstrued. So I don't um, want to be, we have about uh, uh, 540 applicants for who will be taking the exam. And in fact, last year it was more. It was eight. Uh, primarily, everybody thinks it's political. Um, like uh, when you say, uh, many people ask me the question. Um, uh, you have been so academic and now why you want to become political. So uh, if I need to accomplish all this, we need to be in a responsible position where you can collaborate with. Uh, Hello, all. this is Dr. Dheeraj Masappa. I'm a consultant anesthesiologist and welcome to my channel. So today we have Dr. J. Balavenkat with us. Sir is a senior consultant anesthesiologist and academic director in Department of Anesthesia and Perioperative Care in Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, India. And uh, not only that, sir is a visionary leader and also his, he conducts a conference called as GARC. If anybody gets invitation for that conference, that means they are a very a qualified speaker. So I got the opportunity two years back. Luckily, Sir Sir has called me. After that, we developed a friendship and bonding with Sir. So welcome to my channel, Sir. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Deeraj, for giving me an opportunity to be a part of your channel. And I highly um, uh, impressed with uh, what you have been doing, both professionally and also to help young people uh, to scale great heights. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It is uh, our pleasure that you are coming to our channel, sir. And uh, sir, today, uh, uh, some of my subscribers have asked a question uh, which I want to put uh, forward to you. The question is, uh, as a speciality, anesthesia is not being recognized, is what my subscribers felt. Uh, most of them are young anesthesiologists. So their question is that how to uh, develop the recognition for the branch. So I would like to just tell my subscribers what happens if the specialty is not recognized in a longer run. So what happens is the management of the hospital will not understand the importance of the specialty. The equipments which you really want might not get approvals. And also the manpower that you really require might not get approval. And uh, the programs which you really want to conduct might not get an approval. And uh, raising the funds might be difficult. And uh, like that, so many disadvantages will come over a longer run if the specialty is not recognized. And uh, the, it's quite opposite to the surgical specialties where they were recognized. And everything, uh, whatever they want actually happens. And uh, so so this is the serious, this is a very serious problem if you don't address it. Any, every anesthesiologist, if they really want to just come take my salary and go, then this problem will become bigger and bigger over a period of time. So I think this is the time to address this. And why I chose uh, Sir is, Sir is an example and he has actually uh, developed the anesthesia department in Ganga Hospital because when I went, I saw how much they value the department, how much they uh, recognize the department. So how to make every hospital like Ganga Hospital and how to transform that is the question, Sir. It's a single agenda. This uh, video is up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deeraj. Uh, and uh, I felt extremely delighted and happy to invite you to the Ganga Anesthesia Refresher course as a faculty because you brought in a lot of value with you. You brought, a, brought in a lot of new things, uh, subcortical monitoring and uh, how you do complicated neurosurgical procedure and uh, establish yourself as an iconic name in your institution. So you earn respect. So I think you are to begin my uh, talk, I thought um, I should uh, compliment you for the journey that you have undertaken on accomplishing professional excellence. So uh, to answer to your question, mm, uh, very, very pertinent, very important. I think every young anesthesiologist um, 
should introspect uh, on his journey that he's going to take. So what I'm trying to uh, do now is to kind of collate my thoughts and I'm going to present uh, how it was when I started, how we evolved and how we achieved what we are today. Uh, I joined uh, the Ganga Institution way back in 1995. So this is my 28th year. And uh, I wanted to say that nothing happened overnight. It's a journey. So first thing is, I wanted you to have patience. In, uh, uh, in When you embark on a journey, I want you to be very patient. Now, when you join an institution as a youngster, what is the first and most important thing that you need to uh, consider before making yourself a full-timer in that institution? Because only once you join and work for a few days, you will understand the environment in which you're working. And first, the environment has to be conducive. So what do you mean by a conducive environment? Number one, very ethical practice. Number two, your seniors are ones who are going, you are trying to help you to become the best. And uh, number three, you're working with surgeons who are very progressive, uh, both ethical and very progressive. Uh, and uh, they don't work on mediocrity. They work, they work on cases which uh, are challenging. Because I personally feel when the surgeon takes more challenges and poses that challenge to the anesthesiologist, the anesthesiologist becomes better and better. So I think uh, these are the things that you need to consider when you begin your career and when you decide that you are going to be a full-timer there. And the last thing I would say is the money involved. In the first uh, two to three years of your career, you work on the three things which I said rather than thinking about how much money you are getting. And do not get uh, confused when another institution calls uh, you and says, I will give you another 25,000 more. Uh, I don't think uh, you should embark on the journey of uh, switching sides so fast. So once you are sure that you have got a very conducive environment to grow, then do not even think based on the multiple offers you get. Now, once you have decided that you're going to be a part of this institution, now first and foremost, I'm going to deal with this. First, you will actually do an introspection and analyze based on the surgical cases you do and the surgeon you operate, what are the challenges that you have? Whether you're competent enough to handle all the challenges in terms of your skill, in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your wisdom. And if you think there is something lacking, I would want you to spend some time to impart that particular knowledge into you. For example, uh, you never knew how to do a target controlled infusion and total intravenous anesthesia. That's a new skill. Uh, you were not uh, aware of it when you were a postgraduate because it wasn't used. But your surgeon requires it. So now you will embark on a journey of learning that and making it yours. So first is analysis of the gap that you have in your professional competence and try to fill up all the gaps. And uh, skill comes over a period of time. Initially, an intra-arterial line, if you want to start, may take some time. But in the process uh, of learning it, in another six months to one year, you will become excellent. It, you will do within seconds. Uh, starting a venous axis, doing a point of care ultrasound. I think this has become inherent component. So the first and foremost thing I wanted to say is match the requirement of your institution on your skill sets, knowledge and wisdom and first conquer all that. Once you conquer that, what happens is you are respected by your surgeon, your junior colleagues, senior colleagues, even the paramedical staff. The minute you enter the theater, you bring in so much of confidence and positivity that the minute they know you have come in, even if it's a challenging case, they rest assured that you will contribute the best. So the first is to earn the respect of everyone around you inside the operating room. This is step number one. This may take a year or two. Once you have accomplished that, once you have established yourself as an excellent anesthesiologist, the word will spread around. The administration will know you. They will make a note about your contribution. The surgeons go and keep talking about you to everybody around. So you are branded. So I want you to accomplish this branding first. Because once you have established this branding, 
then you will now embark into the next phase of your uh, establishing yourself and becoming more visible so now what you do you will speak to the surgical team and administration and you will say uh, i am uh, very interested to take on few more responsibility in this institution for better patient outcome and uh, i will uh, tell few examples which uh, uh, i went through so first i said uh, uh, i found out the hospital acquired infection as one of the common things uh, which uh, prevented from patients going home earlier so i took over the uh, hicc uh, chairman position in the process i learned a lot about hospital controlled infection so you formed a cell you involved surgical team you involved the nursing team you involved uh, uh, various uh, people involved in the hicc the housekeeping so it's a broad based uh, group and every month we met and the microbiologist so every month we met and we worked on what are the common organisms and uh, what is the kind of antibiotic stewardship that we are following what uh, what are the uh, uh, practices that we do like hand hygiene before and after we started doing audits then we created what is called as a link nurse so in every uh, floor we created link nurses so the link nurses were educated very well and this link nurses will go and educate all the other nurses and for example we found out uh, urosepsis was very common in geriatric women and uh, then we started uh, putting what is called as a catheter nurse everybody cannot do the catheterization so the most trained one will do the catheter these are things which we for i'm giving examples of how we uh, enriched the hicc and brought down the hospital acquired infection so this spreads this spreads that uh, dr bala is doing a lot of work on hicc and our infection rates have come down this catches the attention of the administrator the next thing i embarked on is i found out that there are a lot of medication error there are problem in prescriptions so i met with a clinical pharmacologist so we formed a pharmacological committee and we did lot of audits to see the prescription and uh, every month we also reviewed this then again called for a meeting and we found out the gaps so what happened in a few days uh, to few weeks to few months we developed a robust system on uh, preventing medication errors so again now the administration hears this this is what has happened next you move on the journey to the blood bank so you call for a meeting of the blood bank medical officer understand in this one month how much was used how much was reserved how much blood went went as a waste and what were the products that were used most and the efficacy of the functioning of blood bank and uh, we have so much there to contribute and uh, this resulted in um, the surgical team ordering the blood specifications were given on when to order how much to order so the blood was not wasted so again this reaches everybody in the hospital so um, so what i'm trying to tell is um, an anesthesiology anesthesiologist visibility becomes pronou- pronounced if he embarks on a journey to take few other responsibilities which will result in better patient outcome so i wanted all the young anesthesiologists should think on several avenues where they can contribute where they can take the leadership and where they can prove that the outcomes are better the minute you do this the surgical team finds you such a treasure they start loving you they 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 saying that oh you, you are so good you contributing so much so but in this process i didn't think about the money involved i didn't think about the time involved i just thought that i should contribute because i think every patient comes into the hospital wants to go home with the least morbidity and mortality and as an anesthesiologist we are fortunate enough that you know most of the things uh, that uh, you are dealing with like blood transfusion the next big step that we took forward is in 2022 that is after 7 years of me joining the institution first we encroached into the blood bank into the pharmacy into the infection control practices they were small um, you know intrusions 
having gained uh, some confidence and having made people respect you for what you have contributed now we requested the surgical team to say whether anesthesiologist can take the responsibility of perioperative physicians so we said uh, over a period of time can we wean off all the physicians inside the hospital we will have a panel of uh, experts um, like a gastroenterologist a cardiologist an endocrinologist they will be in the panel but we will call them whenever needed we also know that we cannot be the solution for every challenge but also we know that 90% of the common problems can be addressed by us and uh, so we took up this journey and this last 21 years i am extremely happy to tell that this system works very well the anesthesiologist oh. are doing ward rounds uh, they were there in the white coat they do the ward rounds and uh, in the hdu in the intensive care in the post operative ward everywhere there is anesthetist so the hospital evolved in such a way there are only two specialties surgical speciality and anesthesia speciality but this may be a challenge for those who are joining a multi speciality hospital you may ask me a question you are a stand alone unit or focused uh, orthopedic surgical unit so it's good for you but what if there is already an existing cardiologist a pulmonologist let them be there but i want each one of you to grow exponentially in cardiology in pulmonology so you do the basic finding like do you do a lung ultrasound and find out whether it's a consolidation whether it's a pulmonary edema so then you call them you say so now i have a patient and uh, the saturation was low i've done a lung ultrasound it shows uh, there is a pulmonary edema and also the left ventricular function is slightly deranged and uh, record everything and ask them to give opinion so now what happens you have gained so much insights into something which uh, they only were offering but now this now respect you so much they said oh uh, every finding is there they'll start telling you so why do you need me so you should come to a stage where you need to tell them otherwise what happens they think that anesthesiologists are dumb they think that for everything we write uh, and they think um, they they become you know like uh, uh, when they come itself the way they they treat you they look at you they think um, oh you don't know anything but when you convert that into uh, you know, presenting it in such a way and even when you talk to them you say this is my finding this is what i think this is what i think possibly is the management but you are an expert uh, i just wanted your help in making sure uh, what i got uh, is right so now what happened the visibility in the other specialties and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, what they go and tell it, it's like a wild fire if one good thing you do it goes into the hospital circuit and slowly 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 you are building your reputation so what i personally feel is um, we should not shy away from taking responsibilities the more responsibility you take and prove to them that you can make a difference in the outcome people start respecting you when you accomplish that stage then you will say that uh, i need one more ultrasound uh, i need a tci pump uh, i need one more monitor uh, to monitor uh, by spectral index because i think this will add lot of value to the outcome so when after establishing yourself with the minimal gadgets you had now you slowly start requesting for additional help and they always now think that if you ask then there is some definite reason in doing it and immediately they'll say okay please get a quotation from two three companies tell me which one is good and they will even allow you to choose the one which you want to do so in a nutshell um you need to brand yourself you need to prove yourself you need to be respected and you need to be along with it you should have tremendous integrity to the institution where you work never ever tell anything bad about our institution to anyone outside this gossiping is one which prevents us from growing up in the ladder there may be deficiencies but those deficiencies only for you you can talk to the about it to the institution but not even your friend when they make a phone call you tell oh see this is a big problem in my institution they don't do please don't do that because within 2 minutes it will reach uh, your hierarchy and uh, so uh, in the process of building a, a legacy for yourself 
whether it is small, medium or big, you need to have certain strong uh, points, uh, personal traits. So integrity is very important. Honesty is very important. Positivity is very important. I think when there is a conglomeration of all these factors inside you, you really, really uh, be uh, uh, looked upon by everyone and you internally become extremely confident that you're respected. And I think it's not far from now that every institution in this country and in this world uh, will have uh, anesthesiologists who will take additional responsibilities because I see a transformation. I see a transformation in where the ultrasound is used. Initially, it was for nerve block, for venous access. Now it has gone into point of care ultrasound. People see the IVC and then give IV fluid or they see the lung and the IVC decide to give uh, whether a diuretic or whether uh, you want to use an inotrope. So uh, I think uh, even in India, we are maturing very well. And if this trend continues, maybe five years down the line, 10 years down the line, anesthesiologist will become an inherent component of every system and they will be highly respected for what they do. Uh, this is in a nutshell, which I just wanted to tell the young minds on how the journey that need to embark on to accomplish what they want to accomplish. The future is very bright. It's all up to us uh, to march the right path, to collate with people with positivity. And uh, when you do this, um, you move from one pedestal to the other pedestal and you will soon grow up in the ladder. And uh, looking back after a few decades, you'll feel so happy that uh, you created a system, you created a process, you created strategies, you created clinical pathways. And even if you have so many juniors, uh, they will follow all the protocol that you set in. So, and the outcomes are going to be good. And also, I wanted you to teach as many youngsters as possible. Pass on all the skills you have to the others. This is the other way people respect you. Make everybody around you competent. And uh, don't worry that if they become competent, will they become a challenge? Never. Never they will become a challenge. They So I, I wanted you to become a, a mentor for several young minds. And this has got a snowballing effect. Like Deeraj with his YouTube channel, I think um, he's reaching out to several young minds. He's trying to pass on uh, the pathways that you have to take. Deeraj, I think what you have done is phenomenal because um, you, it is uh, important that uh, when they pass out their MD, they need to know what pathway they have to take. And what you're doing now in enhancing and enriching them with the essential ingredients for their growth will go a long way in making India and Indian anesthesiologists a superpower and a power to reckon. And I hope uh, I gave certain insights into uh, what you asked for, and I'm ready to answer any other question that you have in your mind. So just to summarize, I, uh, first you need to develop the skills, uh, and then we have to uh, embark upon different other areas in the hospital and uh, prove that uh, we can develop the organization. And after that, we have to uh, uh, develop the perioperative medicine, something like that is the way. And uh, I also see a lot of international students coming to your hospital and uh, the conferences that you do. So all that also will add up to the recognition of the center right now, sir. Uh, you're right, because uh, uh, what we started doing uh, the international fellowships from 2014, and uh, what uh, actually uh, drives us doing this is we get uh, uh, colleagues uh, from across uh, Africa and Southeast Asia. And uh, when you talk to them, you understand how much we can contribute to them uh, with full credit to those institutions. They have some gaps and India is slowly becoming a knowledge hub because of the clinical work that we do. And uh, what I realized is um, when you do an analysis of the fellow prior to the fellowship and after the fellowship, you made them so competent. And then when they go, the only request uh, I give them is when you go back to your respective countries, please take leadership roles. Please guide and mentor young minds. What you were capable of doing by coming here, not all of your junior colleagues will be able to do. So you become the power center of teaching in your country. So in this process, what we have done is we have prevented morbidity and mortality in a different country because what we were able to um, uh, emphasize upon. So this is the biggest happiness that I get sitting in a small center, uh, getting people from across the globe, 
to do things learn things and they go back and do it for example in rwanda uh, after the genocide uh, all the anesthesiologist most of them were killed so the young anesthesiologist did not have adequate uh, skill and knowledge so we had dr nayanvi i can quote him because he has given me a free hand to quote his name he's from kigali so he he uh, learned all the techniques and uh, he has gone back and he has started his own training center and now all the rwanda anesthesiologist uh, get trained uh, in all these aspects which we discussed so you feel very happy so it's just not only um uh, making yourself and your hospital good it's making country good so when he goes to kigali he doesn't say that uh, i went to ganga hospital i met dr bala he only says i went to india i learned a lot of things i came back so the indian the country itself gets respected so it's got much more implications uh, than teaching a person so we are putting this country up in the ladder uh, by contributing to other uh, colleagues in other countries and i'm sure uh, dheeraj i think soon we will start a international fellowship in your center and because neuroanesthesia a lot of people do not know you, in sir. these countries and i think uh, you can make a huge impact yes, sir sir uh, i have one more question sir in the vision statement you mentioned that indian skill skill squad is what one of your visions in uh, the 10 visions that you have uh, given so in the skill squad actually you know uh, most of my subscribers they ask me actually uh, sir are you conducting any workshops please let us know if you are conducting uh, any skill development program please let us know i think uh, if you can involve uh, our channel subscribers in the skill squad that you are doing it will help the subscribers sir yeah so actually uh, they got uh, there is there are two reasons uh, on mentioning this skill squad number one is to enhance the skill sets in india so for example gark is one uh, which is uh, something which we aim on a holistic growth that's why we have workshop master classes the upcoming gark is in january 18th to 21st and all the viewers who are interested to come please can log in to www gark g a r c india.com and uh, would see the workshops master classes register for themselves and uh, sometimes it's just that small extra skill set that you will develop will make a huge difference in your clinical practice that is one aspect the other aspect which uh, i was looking at is suppose uh, we train uh, for example your listeners some some uh, 40 people become very proficient what is my vision is to develop an indian skill squad and they will visit countries which need our help for example there are so much of request from zambia zimbabwe mongolia so we will send a set of five anesthesiologist to go and stay there for 2 3 days and educate them in what they want and uh, this is exactly what i meant by developing skill squads uh, indian skill squads and uh, they will go to countries where they need our help and in this process uh, you are trying to create an impact uh, in several countries across the globe so that they look forward for india also and not all the time they look to the west for getting solutions so india will become a solution provider for their challenges this is what in it was in my mind uh, for the skill squad because uh, two years back there was a request from egypt uh, to come and teach them the trauma life support so eight of us went from here we stayed there for 3 days and educated close to uh, 80 doctors on trauma care and uh, after that uh, their outcomes have become better so this is exactly what i meant uh, in developing skill squads of india who will embark on journey to go and teach people outside and i wanted the youngsters to be a part of all these process because the anesthesia is not just giving spinal intubating extubating there is so much more uh, which will give us happiness and uh, you will love it one you go to africa you teach people and the african doctor writes back a mail to you saying that uh, so thank you so much dr dheeraj for whatever you have done to us we never knew anything and now we know everything and uh, this has got such an impact and uh, i wanted a lot of your uh, uh, young viewers to aim to become a teacher first to learn themselves and then become a teacher we will give them opportunities now the requirements are so huge we'll them give them opportunities and if they are interested uh, let them we will form several skill squads like this and send them across the world oh superb sir this is a very good thing i think uh, me and my channel will get involved in the skills uh, skills squad development 
So, sir, uh, last question I would like to ask. How do you see the uh, future of Indian anesthesia in the upcoming uh, uh, 20 to 30 years? Like, uh, how, how do you think it will grow? For example, uh, in USA, anesthesia is one of the top specialities. Like, they get paid on par with the surgeons, on par with radiologists. And uh, in uh, even in Australia, it is on par with other specialities. Even in uh, UK, it is on par with other specialties. But in India, it is slightly, we are... Uh, with with respect to the you know payment and other things so in the upcoming 15 or 20 years how do you see it in india the first point i would like to mention is unlike what we think uh, in us the anesthesiologists are not getting as well paid like their other colleagues the reason is uh, there is a uh, there is a group of um, uh, specialist which they call it as crnas they are certified resident nurse anesthetist. They undergo a program for nine years to become nurse anesthetist. And uh, what happened initially, the anesthesiologist themselves uh, uh, wanted a lot of CRNA so that their work becomes less. So what they will do during intubation, extubation, they will be there and CRNAs will do all the work. This I have personally seen in several of my visits to institutions in US. Now they became a challenge. Now the CRNAs have asked, why can't we do anesthesia ourselves? Why should there be an anesthesiologist? And uh, the, the difference in the pay between CRNA and the anesthetist was also not very huge. So in fact, uh, in fact, even in the US, the anesthesiologists are being challenged in a different format. So uh, I think um, we do not know their internal problems. That's why we think uh, they are in a very high pedestal, which is untrue. So that's point number one. Point number two is um, when you decide to go into a government sector, you know what is the pay package. So there, I think, again, I think the new pay commission, uh, the number of hours they spend there, the pay has definitely increased than what it used to be earlier. But... What happens is uh, corporate units, again, um, it depends on your skill sets. If you prove to them you are good, it's a question of first two to three years. And when you they think that you have become an inherent component, you are very crucial, very important, they don't want to lose you. So they will keep in increasing your pay package. So for that, you have, again, I wanted to tell that you need to prove yourself first and then the payment will go high. And now the challenges happen in private practice. So here is the biggest concern. So when you are challenged in the private practice, the most important thing is if there is one surgical case, there are six people or 10 people available to do the case and someone is able to do it at a particular rate and the other one uh, is wanting a higher rate. So here, here is the catch. And uh, what again I, I personally feel is the surgeon, um, most of them would like to have the most skillful anesthetist because one cardiac arrest, one hypotensive, one bad outcome will shatter their practice. So though for simple cases, they will keep calling uh, all of them and give a small pay. But if the case is slightly complicated, they will wait to get the best anesthetist. So now I want you to graduate <clears throat> to that level of handling the critically ill patient so, number one, uh, the pay also becomes more. And number two, after some time, all the VVIPs, all the doctor's relatives, they will call you. So, essentially, everything I feel is related to your contribution to yourself in becoming one of the best. Then money is definitely not a problem. I can vouch on this. Uh, initial two to three years when things are uh, not settled, you may not know what what's happening but then if you take the pathway which we just discussed i think uh, five years down the line uh, you will become uh, an inherent uh, part and they will never like to lose your services so uh, this is how i look at the whole problem so thank you very much sir and uh, one more uh, 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 statistic i would like to tell you is per year four thousand uh, anesthesiologists are being uh, uh, graduated that is the number of anesthesiologists coming out so, in a period of 10 years, there will be another 40,000 extra anesthetists added to the present uh, anesthesia number. So, will can there be a saturation is another question. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you show the figures, uh, if you talk about the figures, it is looking very tough. 
but uh, i will want to give you an anecdote when i finished my md in pj chandigarh this was in 1995 when i came to coimbatore uh, initially ganga hospital uh, uh, like was not open so i printed a visiting card and i visited all the nursing homes and the surgeons because i did my undergraduation i said sir please call me when you have a case when you have a case and everybody told me uh, this is first on call this is my second on call this is third on call fourth on call okay you may be the fifth on call so every place where i went looked saturated but it was even then not now even then uh, i uh, even my wife was asking have you made a mistake of coming back here but it lasted only 3 months uh because even one case they call you and when you put your uh, uh, stamp there by the way you did the case the way you communicated the way you spoke to the patient the way you followed up the case when they see that there is a difference in the way you handle the case you naturally become the winner so i think more the challenge the more the better outcome everybody wants to be good so i think it's good to have a challenge uh, the person who wants to get the olympic medal works for 4 years and in a 100 meter dash it is few seconds which decides who is the winner but then why he became the winner um, just because he invested so much time in himself to be good so again and again i want to reiterate please invest as much as you can on yourself and every single challenge that uh, you think is on the way will get negated and also uh, it's a fact that uh, even today uh, in many of the centers uh, they are saying that their anesthetists are so busy they are not available uh, even in um, big cities the corporate units are different in private practice uh, the anesthetist or uh, if you are good you are called to so many places so even before one case gets over then they you are called to another case so which means even today it is happening which means even today the number of anesthetist good anesthesiologist required are still high so never ever will there be a time when uh, any of us will starve i can guarantee for that and uh, everybody will earn very good and uh, our small aims in life of having a car of having a home good education for our children will be met at any time irrespective of the number of anesthetist coming in but you need to be prepared for the race take up the challenge and start educating yourself when you are a post graduate itself don't study to pass an exam that is only one aspect of your life you need to pass the real exam of the life and for that you need to have a structured reading even when you are a post graduate every day 2 to 3 hours you should spend on it you need to see the patient pre operatively even your system doesn't want you you have to do it and go and see the patient post operatively analyze what has happened i think uh, these are the things that you will have to invest on yourself to become the best and uh, if you do that believe me you will be uh, recognized forever and you will never start so my subscribers will be very happy after listening to this okay and uh, sir uh, one more question sir about the uh, work life balance of uh, anesthesiologist what is your uh, broad opinion about the work life balance aspect <clears throat> so i actually divide uh, the anesthesiologist life into five year plan so first five year now i am graduating my md so the first five year plan and here i would want to be uh, very frank and open because we do a lot of fellowships i meet with a lot of young anesthesiologists there is a subtle difference between men and women i i want to quote it uh, i don't want to be misconstrued i don't want to be thought that uh, i am uh, supporting only males but women have got uh, more to contribute to the family so in the process what i wanted to tell the young minds is you have to essentially look at your happiness in life very important uh, professional life is important but your personal life according to me is more important than the professional life so for me the personal life comes first professional comes second so if in the first 5 years of life after you finished your md <clears throat> for a male uh, there is not much of uh, issues like he can keep going and doing fellowships but i have a small request i would like to consider all the young postgraduate as my daughter 
And if I'm going to advise them, I would advise them not to compete with men in the first five years after their MD uh, because they have certain chalked out responsibility. So I just wanted uh, the young minds to think if this is my version, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you are not married, uh, I think you should get married. Because uh, by the time you finish MD, most of them are in 27, 28, 29, 30, that age group. So you can be ambitious to do a postdoctoral fellowship and all that. But I would feel that uh, you also need to give importance to your personal life. So I want you to get married. This is what I tell all our fellows and postgraduates. And if you, have, if you are married, I want you to spend time with your husband, know each other very well. Which means it may be that you take a break from what you aspire to do. Um, for example, a fellowship. Instead, you will go and stay with your husband wherever he works. Take up any job that would uh, keep you occupied. Though it is not your vision or aim. But you had the opportunity to live with him. Understand him. Form the strong foundation of excellent relation between each other. And then uh, I also tell if you are uh, married... Now, uh, you please in between the first two to three years, try to become a parent because uh, this is what uh, results in excellent family bonding. A child into the family is the biggest uh, factor which keep the family united and a lot of happiness. So after they take a break for two to three years, now when the child is born, the, the child was given enough time. Now you embark on the journey for the women who missed the opportunity to do fellowships now to go forward. So the first three years, everyone in the family, the in-law side and the pet maternal and paternal side, uh, all of them uh, understand that you were very keen and uh, very uh, important member of the family. You cared for them and uh, you listened to them. Once you establish that identity and then you first you give in and then you put your request that I have a long-standing desire to go and do neuroanesthesia for one year with Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. They will allow you to do. So um, this is the first few years. So first five years is to consolidate your family side. That's number one. Number two, however busy you are, however busy professional you are, the minute you enter the door of your house, just throw away the professionalism inside you and you become an ordinary human being. So you will be the father or mother or daughter-in-law or son-in-law or son. Please see the requirements of the family. Try to fulfill them. Don't go there and uh, take another computer and sit there and work for hours together and uh, make them feel so uncomfortable. So quality time with your family is very crucial. And I think you need to take uh, frequent uh, breaks uh, to go out with them, to go for a movie, to things which you may not like at all. Uh, you may say that this is something I don't... For example, when I go into the house, I have two daughters, they'll be watching a serial, which I think it doesn't interest me. But I go and sit with them, listen to them, I hear them. They should feel that I'm interested in the smaller things that they are interested too. And I spent a quality time with them. So give that feeling. It is not a question of number of hours you work in the hospital. It is the number of hours that you spend in the house appropriately. So you should not go and take a book and sit and read. And you should not say, I have a talk tomorrow. So don't, uh, don't take anything back home. And uh, this will bridge the gap. And I want to spend enough, you to spend enough time with your family. So the first five years goes in consolidating your family life. And the next five years is consolidating your professional life. And the next five years, you start taking leadership position in your hospital. And the next five years, you take leadership position in your city level, state level, national level. And the last five years goes in uh, global networking and establishing your name internationally. So it's a project. Every five years, uh, at that point of time, you have something to do, do it appropriately and then go slowly. There is no shortcut to uh, success. And success comes uh, um, when you decide to do the right thing at uh, the uh, right time. Oh, superb, sir. Very excellently uh, told and uh, uh, very useful interview, sir. And uh, sir, if uh, my subscribers, if they apply for a fellowship under you in regional anesthesia, how should they prepare themselves before they present to you? For the interview. Yeah, so yeah, that's a good question. Actually, the next fellowship entrance exam is coming on the 20th of August. 
so we advertise uh, we advertise for our fellowships uh, well in advance usually the entrance exam is somewhere in the month of august and we advertise somewhere in the month of february and march in our website uh, www.gangahospital.com so um, we have about uh, uh, 540 uh, applicants for who will be taking the exam and in fact last year it was more it was 825 applicants were there and this time about 540 so we have 6 months and 1 year program and uh, it starts in the month of january uh, 1st and july 1st and uh, one year program we are about 12 seats and 6 months we are still continuing for the benefit of uh, our women anesthesiologist because many of them the family does not allow them to go for one year so we don't want to deprive them of the opportunity to uh, learn so that's why we still continue 6 months so uh, one thing which i would wanted to say those uh, who are uh, uh, for example the one who takes the exam in august may be a final year Uh, but uh, when the results are out when we do the counseling they can take up the position they'll finish their exams for example in april they can take the july position 2024 so uh, in one go after md they can do their 6 months and uh, the questions are entirely on regional anesthesia and it it is basics of regional anesthesia we don't go to uh, asking them hi fi so uh, it's a very uh, basics of regional anesthesia and we go completely by merit so now uh, the demand has become uh, more and uh, we are we were very transparent so the minute the exam is over within an hour uh, once we get it from the 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 people who conduct it immediately we put it on the website and the next day we do the counseling and by the second day uh, even the selection is over and we keep a waiting list uh, and uh, when they come here uh, they do, just don't do only anesthesia so whatever i spoke to you we try to inculcate them into their mind we want them to go holistically and uh, everybody has a white coat everybody will be posted in the ward everybody will be made to speak to the patient attenders so we try to uh, make them evolve uh, uh, holistically so is there any age limit i welcome all of your uh, subscribers to join our institution <laughs> Yeah, many people are actually messaging me also like regional anesthesia which is the best center I always recommend your center and uh, but still it's very competitive everybody cannot get the opportunity so i'll tell them to prepare nicely for the exam and then they might join your team sir uh, there is also another uh, opening now the academy of regional anesthesia of india have, they've got 15 centers uh which uh, we are doing one year fellowship so there are uh, quite a number of uh, uh, teaching centers which are available it's all there in the website of uh, uh, www.avoraindia.com uh, so that's another avenue to learn uh, uh, regional anesthesia so the last question and the concluding question i would like to ask you sir so i learned uh, that you are contesting for the isa president or uh, in the election is going to be in the november so my question is uh, so why did you uh, decide to you know participate in the election and uh, what is that is driving you actually to leave this role yeah uh, thank you uh, dr dheeraj for asking asking me this question uh, it was not a easy decision uh, because uh, i work uh, in a clinical unit which is extremely busy and i've also have lot of uh, academic uh, positions which uh, i need to fulfill uh, currently i am in the educational committee of the world federation of society of anesthesiologists i am also the academic chair for the asia pacific society of regional anesthesia and pain medicine and i am al- uh, also in the uh, aolc committee of wfsa so all this needs lot of time but uh, i decided that uh, i will get into this Uh, primarily everybody thinks it's political um, like uh, when you say uh, many people ask me the question uh, uh, you have been so academic and now why you want to become political so actually i look at it in a very different way uh, i think um, time has come uh, to uh, embark on a journey of enhanced uh, patient centric uh, moves as anesthesiologist across this country and uh, it's important to do measures on safety 
and uh, the other important thing is uh, the kind of infrastructure that is available to anesthesiologists in this country is extremely different what happens in a teaching institution corporate versus private practice urban rural there are so many variations so uh, when we have international guidelines the guidelines actually work on uh, guidelines which is suiting that country but it is not for indian circumstances so what i thought we need to create clinical pathways for uh, procedures in different infrastructures in india so we need to have three types of uh, guideline based on which um, uh, we will work you cannot say that don't operate this case in a periphery because uh, that is not uh, what we should tell them but we can tell them uh, what are the guidelines that they need to follow so you should not tell thromboelastography in a rural area so you need to talk to them on what has to be taken into account uh, when you do that so one important component is to enhance patient safety by creating clinical pathways which will suit different infrastructure number one uh, that was number number two is every anesthesiologist have got a smartphone so i wanted to develop an isa app so the isa app will have the facilities to do their log book every private practitioner also can maintain a log book and we will en enter into a kind of an understanding with uh, giants in the field of information technology and database and ask them to provide us a robust server uh, so where all this can be uh, logged in and can be stored for example even if 50 to 60% of anesthetists embark on the journey of uh, giving their data which will be kept confidential but the server will keep recording so we will know the incidence of post operative nausea vomiting in india on a single day 10 lakh uh, login will come and uh, they will say how many nausea vomiting and they will also say in those who didn't have nausea vomiting what was the drug used so we will come to know in an indian population which is the best anti emetic that can be used so this will pave the way for indian guidelines so i i am actually more uh, uh, concerned about evolving uh, ourselves rather than depending on what we see in the western literature and to make all this happen you need to have a responsibility and a position and also uh, i personally feel that um, whenever i gone to meetings outside india uh, i've always felt there is an indian speaker who's equally good senses but those meetings outside the country uh, have large crowd coming from across the world whereas indian meetings do not attract so much crowd this is because the world doesn't know that india can offer so much so we should become the learning hub for uh, africa and southeast asia because we have clinicians who do excellent work who are very knowledgeable and who can also speak good english they are good teachers so i think we need to utilize uh, uh, these uh, um, the treasures that we have and we need to become the educational center and if we do that the world will start respecting you the world will think india is doing so much and how can how i how can i accomplish all this if i need to accomplish all this we need to be in a responsible position where you can collaborate with the people who matter and push in a lot of reforms uh, which will aid and assist us to move forward in the most positive direction and these are the reasons uh, which uh, made me think that uh, i need to run for this uh, position and uh, i consider it as a huge responsibility and i hope if uh, uh, if the, if uh, all the viewers think that uh, i'm an appropriate choice um, i would be most willing to help uh, by contributing my best to the nation i have kept national pride more important uh, than an individual uh, excellence and uh, we always feel very happy when isro launches uh, uh, is uh, chandrayaan or uh, the Uh, virat kohli hits a winning six so we get uh, so fascinated by indian victories and what uh, is that we need to contribute to indian anesthesia to become victorious so i wanted indian anesthesia to be victorious and uh, that's why this journey i hope uh, 
uh, I will uh, be able to do with all your support uh, in case if I get this responsibility. Thank you, Dheeraj, for asking this Thank question. You. So what I feel is, uh, like how we are giving uh, uh, you know, different uh, more and more terms to Modi, <laughs> not one term, I think we should give you two, three extra terms so that you can <laughs> fulfill the you know uh, dreams of yours and along with you, we will also you know, grow. One term is not enough, I think. So two, three times you become president. <laughs> No, but uh, Dr. Deeraj, I, I have a tremendous belief on the youth of India. Yeah. If they are shown the path, they will outnumber me and uh, they will do better than me. So I think uh, I have a lot of faith in the younger generation because of their uh, ability to do things better than us. Okay, sir. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Deeraj. <laughs> Many, many uh, I'm very, very happy uh, to have been a part of uh, this interview and uh, I am sure and I'm extremely confident in our lifetime, we will see a different anesthesiologist and uh, Indian anesthesia at an absolutely higher pedestal. And thanks for doing this. And I'm very happy to reach to each one of your uses and I wish them all the best. And I want all of them to think they are one of the best versions uh, uh, in the earth and they will do wonders. Thank you so much and God bless them in abundance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.